Okay, good morning, everyone. Shall we start with a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, I want to thank you for all the people who are here and online. Thank you for this opportunity. I'd ask that you be with us in a special way. Please help give me the words this morning. Help me to remember the things that are needed here and help us understand and discern. Please correct us and thank you for answering our prayer. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so this morning I'm not actually using the notes. I am going through uh, to talk about different tools and methods of recognizing symbols. Uh, so I wish I had it more organized, but uh, I'm going to follow kind of an outline that I made. Um, maybe talk about the website first here, which is, if you can see this share, is here. Okay, so we were blessed to be able to get this name, palmone.org. Uh, I think it was back in 2021. So I want to say this is a good resources resource for people to oh yeah I just noticed or Theodore just reminded me I have to turn on the screen here so just one second yeah I'll zoom in okay so again this is the website uh, it has links to various resources, just kind of an introductory statement here. Um, the ones I'd focus on are the the tools like the Bible Indexer, Calendar Converter, and the Gematria. So first I want to look at the Calendar Converter. This was originally a project we, with Theodore and Troy and what you have here is different calendars uh, biblical Gregorian Julian you have the Julian day which is a little bit different than the Julian it's because it's a day count so it's a separate calendar you have the rabbinic calendar Islamic you see all these here. If you set a date, let's say today, you can see it's July 24. It will tell you automatically update everything else. So if I go to March, you see everything else updated. And another good feature of this is it lets you calculate the distance between multiple dates automatically. So what you do is you click the save button. Okay, I have a bunch down here. Let me clear that first. Try that again. So you see it added to this date, March 24th. And I want to add today as well. is telling us there's 122 days. So if you're considering some events in history, you want to see how they relate with each other, you would enter in each of the dates um, and that would give you the distance and it would it will count up to 10. I might like to increase this later to more. Uh, but the other part of anal anal sorry, analyzing the symbols here are looking at the individual dates and seeing 
the numbers that are involved in everything like the f first month of the biblical year these these have numbers on them whatever calendar you're on that's true um, I also want to try to add some more features to this like day of the year number would be useful uh, we've found that that's um, relevant in some cases so that's the future upgrade does anyone have any questions on the calendar converter or things I missed well there's things about um so on the the um, the calendar converter of course mm -hmm. you can download once you've saved a table let's say you have 10 dates in there it will have a table if you hit reload so can you hit reload on that or choose okay. file I guess it is right choose file so then he's going to have files that he has saved right and yeah. then when you when you scroll down you'll see there's uh well that one wasn't one you let me try a different one here yeah find one, an old one I don't know where you save them. It'll save them usually. Mine, it saves in my downloads, but. Here we I go. Think, yeah, so this is a table that he created before of different dates. Um, and so you can save these different tables. Uh, as he said, it only holds up to 10 dates, but it's very, very useful. And uh, in some of my notes, I have uh, a table of dates. So you, when I create a line, in the line of the judges and we put those dates in our history we would uh, create a table like this and you'd start to be able to see structures in those dates thank you I do want to point out maybe a couple of other things here about how this works uh, on the Babylonian you can see this was kind of a new newer addition back in I think can't remember if it's 21 we'll cover that later but, but anyway this is something called illumination and this is based on I believe the start of the Babylonian Empire so there's a lunation number so can you go to a Babylonian date so go to um, uh, you know 592 BC or something like that Yeah, okay, you could just do that. And and you'll see if he puts in a lunation number, it will give you a date. Um, and this is the date of the lunations that are recorded by um, uh, Parker and uh, Duberstein. 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 Yeah. They're two uh, Assyriologists who recorded all of these dates. So these are just the ones that they've recorded. But just like... Uh, these calendars that were created by man, uh, Roman, we got Roman pagan, Roman uh, uh, papal, uh, we have the numbers in the Bible for dates. All of these things, God has used these symbols to give us information. And so even these lunation numbers, uh, even though they're created by man, have significance. Thank you. So just a couple more points about this. Uh, this day over here is just, just day of the month. And you can see on this side, you have the length of that particular month. This is a Mayan calendar, which is pretty famous. I know theaters mentioned the 13th back to before just want to show you really quick how you get there you just type it in December 21st 2012 next if there's no other questions on that I want to go to the Gematria tool and you can type in the chat if you're online and you have any any question mm. yeah I'm gonna zoom in Okay, so this is the tool. I actually, let me back up. So 
So here I am on the Palmoni site. You just click this link to go to this calculator. Then you can type something in. It gives you the normal sum, which is just adding the numbers A equals 1 and Z equals 26. And the product, so you can see these are the same exact numbers, but you're just multiplying. The reverse sum is where you take A equals 26, as you can see here. And then Z would equal 1. And then it gives you 109. And then the multiple, uh, reverse product is what we'll call it. You, do, you just multiply these. Combined is where you take these two sums together, so 80 plus 109. And differential is when you subtract, so 109 minus 80 is 29. This 29 could be a symbol for the Sunday law because of the 20th day of the ninth month. So that's interesting. I actually haven't done this one before. Anybody here have questions on this or in the chat? Okay. Can you do? Um Can you do a, a Palmoni on, let's say, Peter? Yes, that's a good example. I believe Jeff covered this in the 2019 camp meeting. Gives you 144,000. So we had used Gematria in, in a limited sense uh, to analyze some of the names like Peter. And, and of course, it's in the context of what verse? Matthew so Matthew, verse Matthew 16, verse 18, which is uh, the Fibonacci number, 1.618. So, golden ratio. Yeah, the golden ratio. So the fact that that, you know, that is, thou art Peter, right? And, and we have this 144,000 based upon, uh, it, it's the verse in which he, he expresses faith in Christ, I believe, too, right? Isn't it? Right? He express, expressing that Jesus is the Son of God. So, so we saw the significance. So when we're using numbers like this, it's not magic numbers. We're not trying to plan out our future uh, by naming, you know, our pets or our children or ourselves special numbers so that we can control God and control our destiny. We just simply note that these are symbols in Scripture. So this isn't numerology, but it can be used for numerology, which we don't do. Right. So the next thing I'd like to look at is the Bible indexer. I'm going to actually talk more about the history of this uh, later in a presentation, but I'm just going to show you how it works for now. So here it is on the Pelmoni site. It's similar to eSword in the way it's layout. It's got the books over here chapters, and then the actual verse, numbers, and text on the, on the right side. Um, so if you click on a verse, it gives you the metrics. So I'll talk about these. Reverse verse is within the specific chapter that you're in. So Genesis 1, it has 31, you can see here, 31 verses in that chapter. So counting from the end of the chapter, this would be the 25th verse. Can you zoom in a bit, because I think some people may not be able to see what you're doing. Is that, 
better? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Within the Bible, as you'd expect, this is the seventh verse, just because it's Genesis 1 7, so that makes sense. And also, this next one, within the Bible, like from Genesis to Revelation, this is the 31,096 verse. Within the book, as you'd expect, it's seven as well. And reverse within the book, it's 1527. Book numbers, self-explanatory. Reverse book number, yeah, again. Can you speak up or on? Uh, maybe put on the mic closer. Can everyone hear? Okay, one second. I can try. Um, so we have the verse chapter. Oh yeah, we just talked about that. Bible chapter one, reverse Bible chapter 1189, because there's a total of 1189 chapters in the Bible, and this is the first one. Now the sum, this is taking gematria. So it's if I were to put this whole text into the gematria, if I, here we go, you'd see we get the same numbers. So this one is 1266, and here we have 1266. So that's just a shortcut. If you're studying through the Bible, you see a, a verse, you can associate this entire verse with that number. And, okay. Now there's a little bit more here. If you want to look at just one word, you can just highlight it. So firmament, for example. And you can see it puts this new line right here. It open, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. This is telling you what you selected. And now you have the commentary for that word or phrase, like if I did main of the firmament, that'd be 155. 277. So you can select just a single word and look at it by itself like that. Yes. Now, you may. since there's 1189 verses and you're looking at, or chapters in the Bible, and you're looking at the first chapter, together that would be 1190, wouldn't it? Even though there's 1189, it'd be like prime numbers if you take the prime number and you look at the factors you're adding one to it so it, it has the symbol of 11.9 in there yeah another way I look at that is if you went to the beginning like the space that's right before Genesis 1.1 that would be 11.90 coming back from the end of the Bible or from the last chapter in the Bible or you consider it like either a cardinal or ordinal account, depending on how you're doing it either way. Yeah. Did you say 1988? Yeah, agree fully with that. That's another observation. Uh, so what he, that was Stephen saying that it can represent uh, 1989, uh, November 9th. November 9th. Well, yeah, it's November. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
I guess there's different ways you could look at it. He was saying November of 1989. But yeah, also I think you can look at it as that specific date as well. Okay. The other points about this are the, is the search button and actually these buttons on the top, but first I'll talk about search. If you put a number in here, what it's going to do is navigate. So I want to go forward 216 verses. So I just enter that and press enter. And it takes you to the 217th because I just added 216 to 1, so it's 217. And it gives me Genesis 911. Now I can go backwards as well. Let's say minus, whoops. Sometimes, I think there's a little bit of a glitch. When you hit arrow keys, it will try to navigate. That's, I mean, it's supposed to do that, but it shouldn't do that when you're in the search box. So I need to fix that. So if I start here in Genesis 1, I go back 216 or 217 even. It takes me to Revelation 11, 13. And if I just want to search a word, for example, I can also do that. Yeah, it takes it gets me Acts twenty seven twenty eight, and you can click on this. If there were more, it would just give a whole list coming down the side. Okay. Now this is similar to the calendar converter in a way because it allows you to create a matrix of verses to see what the distance between verses are. Although I would say we haven't found a lot yet with that. But I go ahead. I went ahead and added it. So from Acts 21, just picking another verse, Job 1. We can add this as well. Tells me the distance. Can you look at the distance between um, uh, Exodus 31:13 and Ezekiel 20:20 or 20:12? Maybe all three. Just want to see if, how quick you can do that. And what was the other one? Uh, Ezekiel 20:12 and 20:20. Okay. Right down there. And did you want is equal twenty twenty? Twenty twenty. Yep, okay. Just wanna see. Okay, so what does it show us? Anything interesting? Well, I'm looking through these numbers, and it's not something obvious. But I will talk more about if you see a number that you don't recognize, what what can you actually do with it? There's different things. So I'm going to keep this window open. We can look at some of these as an example. Now it does navigate when you click 
on these numbers. So that's why you see the screen jumping a little bit. I'm going to copy this one. So the next thing we'll look at is a site called Number Prime. And now that I have this number to look at, we'll go to this site. We're going to okay, zoom in and Okay, then enter the number that you want to consider here. Look it up. And the first thing we get is the factors. There's actually a lot of things here, but let's consider factors first. If I clicked on the factor, it would also analyze that number as well. And the interesting things about factors sometimes are um, if they're a prime number, like this one's 440th prime. For all the factors. Yeah, they're going to be prime. So that's what I was trying to show you is that what prime is this? It's the 100, I mean, the 440th prime. Two is the first prime. Three is the second prime. Okay. And then. So I know this is a little bit of uh, math. But you can look at the factors are the prime numbers uh, that a number can be divided by. And then the divisors are any numbers that a number can be divided by. And you can count the number of the divisors and also the sum of the divisors. So those things can be interesting. But here with the prime, if you look on that 3079, right, go back to that one again. So that the 3079, you could have clicked on it. Oh, this yeah. one? Yeah. 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 So when you look at the the primes, scroll down, it's the 440th prime, and any musician should know what that number is. That's A440. And it's also part of our triangle analysis, too. So so some of these numbers uh, are significant, significant in that they're part of the, all these structures. So, you know, what Iran's doing is he's going to show you lots of these different analysis that he's used these tools for. And we use them in analyzing verses of the Bible, stories of the Bible. We use it in when we were studying the book of Judges, as you'll see in my presentations. And they gave us clues for interpreting the lines. But the lines were witnessed to by multiple examples of these. So often we first created the line and then we analyzed it. So these are analytical tools that God uses uh, to help us understand things. So, thank you. Some of the other things I look at sometimes is if you're using a different number system, like say binary. Not as I don't typically look at this much because obviously it's just zero or one. But octal tends to be interesting in some cases. Duodecimal means that it's a base 12. Hexadecimal means that there are 16 different options. So 0 through um, F, I believe. So it does A through F. Once you pass 9, A would be 10. And the interesting thing about, let's say, the octal, of course, that's the number 8. So it's base 8. It's, it's number of the resurrection. Duodecimal is base 12, and we know the symbol for that. Uh, that has to do with the church and the patriarchs. And then the hexadecimal is just simply base 16, but that's 8 plus 8. And we have that in our lines as well uh, from Second Chronicles 29, where the eight days they cleanse uh, the holy place, the priests, and then eight days uh, the Levites cleanse uh, the courtyard. I think that's right. So so when we're analyzing these, they're, they're purposeful 
in, in multiple ways that these symbols uh, give us information. Thank you. There are other things we can do with numbers as well. And I'm going to bring up the calculator here. Just make it bigger. Yeah. Is that big enough? You can screen share the calculator. And then it'll be bigger. It'll, the numbers will be bigger. Okay, if Theodore is suggesting sharing that specific app. So let me see what I can do here. Does that look better? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to use the number again that we just did. Paste it in here. 18474. And the first thing I want to consider is a time span. So we can take a unit, and let's say that unit is a prophetic year. And I can divide this. So what this is doing is it gives me what number of years would this be equal to. And in this case, I get 51.31. I can determine the remainder to see if that gives me something as well. So subtracting 51 and multiply by the same whatever the units was, so in this case 360. That gives me the remainder of 114. So you'd have 51 remainder 114. And you can do that with different periods of time, like a month. You know that a lunar month would be 29.53059, or you could do, you know, a 29-day month, potentially, or whatever, like a week. You want to determine how many weeks it is. And another thing about that. So this is a very useful, uh, for me, I do this all the time. So I look at a number, let's say it's a Hebrew number, or it's a number in the Bible. I'll divide it to see how, because that period would have been 51 years and 114 days. And you can even uh, establish that span of time between two different dates. But sometimes, uh, you know, just that 1144, you could look, as you're saying, you're going to add a feature where we can see the, the number of the year. So it 114 can be uh, a date. So the 114th day of the year would be um, that would be in um, April, right? April no, April 11. So it could represent April 11th, the 11th day of the fourth month. But you could also count the 114th day of the year. Um, so I don't know. You would normally just go to January 1st and count 113, and that would give you the 114th day of the year. But eventually you're going to put that feature in there, right? In Yeah, I'd like to do something like that. Okay. So I went back to the calendar converter. Another way you can determine the day of the year, at least in the meantime, is you could just start with, like, say, Nissan 1, and you can add numbers here like 114, that'd be 115, 115th day. But if you go back one, it'd be 100, 114th day, Tammuz 25. What is that again? So the cardinal count, if you added 114 days from the beginning of the biblical year, it'd give you the 26th day of the fourth month, right? Yes. Right. Now what if you go to January 1st? Okay, I'll use the Gregorian. This is going to be a little bit different on our calendar. Sometimes it can be the same, especially from the start of the year because of February. And it depends whether you're in a leap year or not as well. So here 
You added 114? I added 113, so this is the 114th okay. day. And notice April 11th is the Julian date, which is the 11th day of the fourth month. But yeah, if you added 114, it would end up being April 25th. So, yes. so these are just ways in which we analyze uh, these numbers. So there's lots of different tools we have. So some other examples of what you could do are looking at geometric relationships, like the if you take um, the area compared to the radius of a circle, for example, um, you might find that actually gives you something. So something like that would be considered in math as a function because you're mapping from one number to another number with this function. Uh, reverse metrics, you know, we sort of talked about that with gematria where you're just counting backwards, for example. That's something to consider. And a number can also be broken down into an equation. And the best tool for doing something like that would be the number prime that we just recently looked at. Because it gives you factors. And with those factors, you know, it tells you what the components of a specific number are. So that's the first thing you'd want to consider. So I want to get, give you a specific example, like go back to the calculator here. What is it? Number 16. 16? Yes. So if I have this number 16 and I just want to do something simple like subtraction, I can subtract 1 and I can subtract 8 and I can subtract 7. And what this essentially tells me is that 16, a different way of doing it, but it tells me that 16 is equal to 1 plus 8 plus 7. And with the equations, you can do a lot. I mean, so I'd say about when you're using an equation, the more simple the equation, the more significant it would be, and you probably want to bring in other witnesses, not just a simple equation. Equation. Another one I had in mind was if you take the number 99, or I say 9 times 11 equals 99, so you could relate this number back to 911 if you see 99 that would give you this is an example of an equation so it's kind of like a secondary witness because you're taking one step away from that number essentially by doing this equation as an operation against that number be like 777 yes like if you had the number Theodore was just saying 111, and you wanted to see what's 111 weeks. So you just multiply by 7. It's 777. Does anyone have any questions or think I missed something? Well, so in this analysis of numbers, because People may be confused. Not everybody's a mathematician. But what a number is in the Bible is a symbol. And we know that we have gematria in the Bible. If you take the name Jesus Christ in Greek, it gives you 888. And Louis F. Weir, actually, in his book, um, The Certainty of the Third Angel's Messages, 
or the third angel's message. Uh, he was an Australian evangelist. And he has a section there dealing with symbolic numbers. And so these numbers, of course, the number seven of completion or perfection, the number eight, the number of the resurrection, right? the number 12, the number of the church, uh, you know, the tribes of Israel, the 12 disciples. But these numbers together uh, are representational on the charts themselves. So, for instance, on the 1843 chart in the top right corner is 7 times 12. And so we have the number 84. And so 84 becomes a symbol of 7 times 12. And so these numbers all relate to each other. And, and that's, what we're, that's why we're using them, is that they're symbols that are in the scriptures. And we can analyze uh, the stories of the scriptures, the verses, and um, the lines that we draw them upon and the dates, all of those symbols uh, give witness to this. So, for instance, we have 777. We know we have this period of time, the 777 days from November 9th, 1989, or, or 19, uh, 2019. We also have it in 1989. But 2019 to December 25th, 2021. And we know it's 111 weeks. But then Jeff, in his Levitical chiasm, noted January 11th. And January 11th, then, is a symbol for the 777 days. So these are wheels within wheels. And so what Dwight had talked about in the first presentation, that these numbers on the charts, that the chronology that was given in the Bible, and these symbols here that Iran is showing us, and these tools, we need to use them. Um, we need to practice these things. So I know it's a little bit scary for some people, uh, but if you start using these tools, you'll start to understand what it is we're doing. And you'll start to see the significance of it, that these are not random or coincidental uh, occurrences, that these are purposeful, that they're guided by God's hand, and they're meant to speak to us. And one of the things that Iran is going to do is he's going to address things like birthdays, deaths, and some of these can be very personal in our own family. And, and, and a person on the outside or a critic could say, well, this is, again is numerology. What does, what does it matter when you were born or when somebody else was born as a symbol? But because God is working in our lives and the hairs of our head are numbered, all of our days are numbered, those become ways in which God can show us that he is leading us and he can use it to instruct us. And so some people look at it as almost egotistical if you're going to say, well, this is my birthday and I'm going to draw it on this line. But it's just acknowledging God's ownership over us and the, his providence in our lives and in this movement. So Jeff's birthday becomes significant as a symbol and shows up in our lines. Doesn't mean that, you know, uh, there's something magical about that. It just shows that God has led in how he has uh, chosen these different people. And he's bearing witness to that and the messages that they gave. It doesn't make them infallible or uh, anything like that. So when we put our birthdays in there, we're not saying we're special. Uh, we're just saying that this is showing that God is leading. And it's not the only witness. It's a secondary witness, sometimes a tertiary witness. It's, it's not the main evidences that we're using for our message. Thank you. There's one other tool I'd like to look at that we've been using in the morning studies. Um, just want to touch on it and maybe give a couple examples. This is the eSword, which is a free Bible resource. And if you have the KGB Plus, what it does is it gives you numbers that are associated with the original word, like a Hebrew word in this case. In this case, it's seven one, 
or so, sorry, 7218, and is talking about a head. So you potentially can relate this to July 18, 2020, because what you do is you just consider the set of numbers, even though they're not in the correct order necessarily. It'd be July followed by the 21st day, and then the, uh, sorry, 18th day, 21st, actually, sorry. 18th day in the 20th year. Or if you look at this one over here, Delilah, it's the same idea, 18th day, seventh month, so that can represent delay 18. Theodore was saying the first word in the Bible is Rosh. Which it's Bevashin, but it's in different form, but it's still that word. Okay. Okay, that's probably all I have, unless there's any other question. I was just wondering if it was true that the Yahweh are the numbers for the human DNA. I I'm not believe sure. it is. So 46? What do they mean by that? I didn't study it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what that means. The word Yahweh is the numbers for the human DNA. So I'm not sure what... Yeah, but I just I just don't know what that means from a, a technical point of view of what numbers are produced. Do you know anything about that, Stephen? Okay. Yeah, apparently I wasn't sharing. I will try to correct that in the recording. I'm sharing the screen now. You weren't sharing that screen, but you were sharing other ones? Yeah, I was still sharing the calculator instead of this other screen, ah. but I do have it on my other recording, so we'll just add that back in. Okay. So just dealing with uh, the first word in the Bible, if you look in, uh, can you go to Genesis 1-1? One, one? Yes. And you see that word in the beginning? And if you click on it, you'll see it's it's a different number, uh, Rashid, but you'll see it's a related word. It comes from the word Rosh, right? So Rosh means head, and that's why you get beginning. So, so, so these are Strong's numbers, so this is the Strong's Dictionary. And because it's in a different form, Be Rashid, it's in a feminine form, plural, and uh, it's... Uh, well, feminine form, not plural. And it has a, a bet in front of it, the B. So it's bet al sheet instead of just rosh. But it's the same. It's that first word of the Bible is based upon this number, which represents uh, July 18th. So that's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, the other interesting thought I had about that is remember that Genesis 1 1 had the reverse gematria of 777. So it kind of relates that July 18 symbol with the 777 in a, in a way. So at this time, we'll cl close with prayer. Dear Father, I want to thank you once again for this opportunity and ask that you'll help us as we consider these things, help us to apply what we've learned. Please be with us the rest of this day. And I ask these things in Jesus' name, amen.